Hello photographers, today we're going to look at iPad Pro raw photo editing. Specifically, we're comparing six different raw editing apps for iPad so you can choose the best raw editor for you. The apps that we're comparing are Lightroom, Affinity Photo, Pixelmator Photo, Raw Power, Darkroom, and Snapseed. With this comparison, we're going to be looking at two things across two videos. In this video, we'll look at how well each app handles and edits raw data. In other words, how good or bad a photo looks after being edited. And and in the next video, we're going to look at and compare the overall feature set of these different raw editing apps. Let's get started. For the actual raw editing, I did two comparisons. A direct comparison, where as much as possible, I applied the exact same settings to the same photo in each raw editor, and a relative comparison, where I edited the same photo, trying to make it look as good as I could make it look in each raw editor, regardless of the settings used in any of the other apps. For both of these comparisons, Lightroom is the benchmark app because whether you love it or hate it, Lightroom is pretty much the industry standard raw editor. The first comparison we'll look at is the direct comparison. And to be fair to the other raw editors, there was one Lightroom tool that I didn't use, even though I think it's an incredibly powerful tool and a huge advantage for Lightroom as far as raw editing goes. That tool is the profile tool. So here's what my unedited raw file looked like on import into Lightroom with the default Adobe color profile applied to it. And these are the edits that I made in Lightroom, and this is what the photo looked like after that edit. I then took those settings and went to each other app and applied them as closely as possible, giving me a set of photos that looks like this. However, this is not the greatest way to compare them, so let's take a closer look. What I wanted to look at in this comparison is how well each app handled highlight recovery in slightly overexposed areas, how well it rendered color across the image, how well it maintained detail in areas with highly saturated colors, and how well it handled noise in the shadows. On all three accounts, Lightroom did a really nice job. It brought back significant detail in the hair and in Cecilia's face, although her forehead is a tiny bit hot. It rendered and maintained color fidelity with the strong edits I did, and it did a nice job of keeping details in the highly saturated colors of her hair. Affinity did a really great job of pulling in the highlights, but in doing so, the colors went way off. Affinity also struggled to maintain details in the highly saturated colors of the hair, but it did do a nice job with clean shadows on her neck. Pixelmator Photo struggled on the highlight recovery, which is most evident in her overexposed forehead, but it did a nice job on color rendering and an okay job of maintaining detail in the saturated highlights. It also managed the shadows on the neck very nicely. Next is Snapseed, and I included Snapseed Snapseed because everyone loves to mention this for raw editing on your mobile and on your iPad. And once upon a time, it was the gold standard, but this app has not aged well. At first glance, Snapseed appears to do a really nice job of highlight recovery, color rendition, and maintaining detail in the saturated color areas, but upon closer inspection, all is not well. If you look at the transition area between the highlights and shadows on Cecilia's jawline, there's this really ugly banding, and there's a great deal of noise in the the shadows. On top of that, if you look at the entire image overall, Snapseed just does an ugly job of rendering the whole thing. Raw Power really fell flat with the direct comparison. While it did a pretty nice job of rendering the colors, it really struggled with highlight recovery, creating these ugly transitions around the nose, lip, and cheekbone areas. And it did a horrible job of maintaining detail in the highly saturated color areas. Finally, Darkroom also totally fell apart in this direct comparison. Highlight recovery was terrible. It's got an ugly yellow-green color cast to it. There's significant noise in the shadow areas on her neck, and it struggled to maintain detail in the highly saturated areas. Based on this comparison alone, in my opinion, Lightroom was hands down the best, with Pixelmator Photo and Affinity Photo pretty much tied for second place, with Snapseed, Raw Power, and Darkroom just failing. And to be fair, I wanted to do this comparison with a variety of RAW files, so I got a Canon, a Nikon, and a Sony RAW file, and you can peep all of those comparison images over on my website. I found similar results with all of the other RAW images, though less extreme because the other RAWs were less demanding than my Olympus RAW was. With the Nikon RAWs, you can see that Lightroom and Affinity held up pretty well, with the rest of them falling a little bit flat. An important note with the Nikon is that Snapseed didn't support the RAW file, and instead 
had pulled in the embedded JPEG preview, and the RAW is from a Nikon D500, which is a three-year-old camera. With the Canon RAW, they actually did a nice job, although Affinity's colors are a bit much. And with the Sony RAW, the results were very similar to the Canon RAW, quite nice across the board, except for Affinity's more aggressive colors. And again, Snapseed failed to recognize the Sony RAW file, this time from the two-year-old A9. However, this is just one comparison, and it's the most difficult comparison because regardless of how bad it looked, as best as possible, I was using the exact same settings in each app. I did this direct comparison to see how the apps fared when settings were pushed to the extreme and to see what their limitations were. This next comparison is a relative comparison with the same photo edited in each app independently. The photos were edited to make them look as good as I could make them look in each app, regardless of the settings used in any of the other apps. Now, real quick, before we take a look at the relative comparisons, I wanted to let you know that this video has been brought to you by me. I spend a lot of time and put a lot of effort into these videos. And if you'd like to support the making of them, you could do that in a few different ways. If you'd like to get a t-shirt, a hoodie, some stickers, or some other awesome Take Some Damn Photos merch, you can do that at this link right here. Or if you'd like to become an ongoing supporter, you can head over to my Patreon page, become a monthly patron, and get some really sweet rewards. All right, so for the relative comparison, I once again started with this raw image. In Lightroom, I made all of the same changes with one addition, which was changing the the profile from the default Adobe Color to my preferred profile of Adobe Neutral. And I'm really happy with how the image turned out. Good color, great highlight recovery, good detail in the saturated areas, and no excessive noise in the shadows on her neck. Affinity Photo also did a great job across the board. Great highlight recovery, in fact, a little bit better than Lightroom. It has good detail in the saturated areas of the hair, though I think Lightroom did a slightly better job there, and there's no excessive noise in the shadows on her neck. Pixelmator Photo did a nice job as well. Nice colors, good job on highlight recovery, though not as good as Affinity or Lightroom. It did struggle a bit to maintain detail in the saturated areas, but with a light touch, it does an okay job, and the shadows look good with no ugly noise. Snapseed, again, did pretty awful. First of all, the overall rendering just looks low quality, which kills the image. The one good thing Snapseed did here is render the colors. It did okay with detail in the saturated colors, but it's sucks in highlight recovery. The shadows are full of ugly noise. And again, it just looks like the whole image was run through the Facebook compression algorithm, which makes the whole thing look awful. Raw Power did a nice job with everything but the detail in the saturated color. Just look at her hair. It looks like I took a marker to it. And finally, Darkroom actually did a very nice job across the board. Good color, good highlight recovery, though not quite as good as Lightroom or Affinity. Pretty good detail in the saturated color area though it did struggle with that, and the shadow areas look pretty good too. There is some color noise there in the shadows, but it's not the worst that I've seen. And as I did with the direct comparison, I took the Sony, Canon, and Nikon RAW files through the same process. Here, I found the performance of all the apps was really pretty great, with the exception of Snapseed. And while I give you some time to compare the other RAW edits, I want to talk a bit more about Snapseed. If I recall correctly, Snapseed was the first app that could edit RAW files on mobile devices. And you'd think with that development history, it would be an awesome app today, but that is not the case. Sadly, it may be the curse of Google. Google purchased Nick Software, the original developers of Snapseed, back in 2012. And since that purchase, the development seems to have kind of stalled out. So in addition to not doing a very good job overall, as I mentioned earlier, Snapseed doesn't support the Sony or Nikon RAW files from cameras that are two and three years old. And there's just no excuse for these RAW files not being supported. By pulling the embedded JPEGs to edit instead of the full RAW data, Snapseed just destroys these images, particularly the Sony. To give you an idea of how bad it is, here's the edit I did on the Sony RAW file. The full resolution JPEG I got from a 24 megabyte RAW file is this 433 kilobyte file that looks like crap. In the end, it's up to you to draw your own conclusions, but purely in terms of image quality and ability to edit RAW files, my order of preference for these apps is Lightroom, followed by Affinity Photo, then Pixelmator Photo, then Darkroom, Raw Power, and if I had no other choice, Snapseed. In next week's video, I'm going to look at the other features each of these apps offers, including asset and file management tools, a comparison of the actual raw editing tools available, 
and exporting options. In the meantime, if you have any questions about editing or managing your raw files on iPad, let me know in the comments. And I have a question for you. Based on the results I got in my comparison, if you had to pick just one, which of these apps would you pick as your raw editor of choice? Let me know in the comments and then do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos and then get out there and take some damn photos.